Hi guys, and welcome in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to make a looping arrow animation in DaVinci Resolve. I'm in the edit section of DaVinci Resolve, and I will create a fusion composition. Right click here, new fusion composition, and you can rename it a looping arrow animation. Once it is created, we drag it from here and move it on the track, the first video track, then go to the fusion tab of DaVinci Resolve. Now we need to click to the effects, and once this menu is visible, click on the tools, and go to the shape menu and click it. Now we need to use some of the components here. First of all I will be using the S rectangle and anytime we use the shape components in DaVinci Resolve we need to add an S render node. And now we need to connect the output of the S rectangle to the input of the S render. So just click on the output and drag it to the S render. We also need to link the output of the S render to the media out node. And now here we can see the rectangle. And we don't need two screens so I'm just working with one so click here. To move to a single viewer. Now we need to make to adjust the height and the width of this rectangle. So we select the S rectangle node and then we go here on the width. Let's adjust the height first. So move it to the left. Maybe some somewhere like this is good. And next we can adjust the width a little bit. So move the slider to the left. Next we need to add an S hangon node. Click and drag it here. We can uh, connect the output to the S rectangle, so just click and drag the output, release it to the output of the S rectangle, and now we create an S merge node. Let me readjust this to here. Now we select the S hangon, and we need three sides, not six. And this way we make a rectangle. Now we can, if we drag it here, we can move it to the right. We need to adjust the width and the height of the triangle, so this is the tip of the arrow. And also, if you want to move proportionally the width and the height at the same time, you can do this. So you can right click on either the width or the height. I will right click on the height, hit expression, and then click and drag this plus button to the width and release it. Now these two properties are connected together. And now if I adjust the width, the height will adjust proportionally. Now we have an arrow here. And next, I want to change the color to red. So first we change the color for the rectangle node. Click the rectangle node, go to the style, click on the color. And I choose this red color. Next we go to the S hangon node, click it, go to style, color, and select the same color as for the rectangle. And now if we want to adjust all three nodes all together, we can select them, move them to the left, and we can add an S transform node. So select an S transform node, click and drag it, and release it when you see the line turning blue. Now we have added an S transform node, and here I will also want to change the X and Y size all together, so right click on the Y expression, and then click the plus button and click connect it to the X size. Now if you change the X size, both the X and Y dimensions will change together. Now if you think that one part of the arrow is not placed correctly, then you can select that part again, go to the controls, and you can move the X or Y out offset. If you click control and hold it, you will make smaller adjustments, so it should be in the middle, so I think this is good now. And now we need to make the animation. To make the animation, I will move the whole arrow, the tip and the body of the arrow all together by clicking the S transform and adjusting the X offset value. So let's click the control and hold it, and I want to put it somewhere here. So if I go in the frame 30 and I hit this diamond here, I will add the keyframe. Then I will need to go to frame 0 and move the X offset, put the tip of the arrow to this X icon here. And now if I play it, we'll have this animation. Now if we want to this animation to play back again, then we go to the frame 60, add the keyframe. Now we need to go to frame 0, copy this value, and paste it on the frame 60. And now if we play the animation, the arrow moves left and right. Now if we open the spline editor and go select the S transform, we need to smooth this animation a bit. So we select all the points here by dragging a rectangle all around of them. And if you hit the S key, so if we play it now, we get a much smoother animation, but one other thing we need to do here is to make this animation loop forever. And it's really pretty easy to do. All we have to do is select all the three points and hit this icon here. Set loop. And now we have a loop in animation and it will loop forever. Now if you want to use this animation, we can add a, a video clip. Let me move this fusion composition to the second video track and go ahead and bring my video clip, put it down. Now I want this arrow to point to this camera on the left bottom part of this video, so we can transform it, select the fusion composition, change the position, and now we rotate it. Let me play the animation. Okay, so the ending of the animation should be a little bit further. Yeah, 
even though the clip is 5 seconds, if we make it longer, if we click here and drag it to the end of it, since we are using the loop, it will the animation will continue playing all through the end of the video clip. Okay, so I hope you learned something from this tutorial. If you want more DaVinci Resolve tutorials, click the card above. If you liked this video, hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And with you guys see you in the next video. Thank you for watching and bye.